Okay, it's good to see you all this morning. It's great to see some new faces in as well. I'm going to speak this morning just for a short time on three verses this morning. And it's from Luke 15, verses 8 to 10. And it says, Or what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now, some weeks ago, in fact, probably a couple of months ago, I was thinking about what shall I speak on this morning? Because one thing is good about Matthew, he does give me plenty of notice, so it, it just gives me time to think, and I like that. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about what shall I speak on? And these verses came to me, I thought, it's only a short passage, and it's about the lost piece of silver, the lost coin. And then I thought, well, I'll speak on that. And then I started to look in my older Bible, the one that has got all these notes in and everything. And I opened the page onto this. I got a, a little bit of paper in like this. And I had to smile. I was looking at you now, Mrs. Dando, because many years ago, Pastor Dando spoke on this on a Sunday evening when I was leading. And I wrote down the, the three points that he made. So I... If you, if you remember Pastor Dando, he would always have three points, and they would always begin with the same letter if he could. And I'd wrote these down. I wrote nothing else down, because if I had, this morning would have been a lot easier. But <laughs> I just got the headings. But I am gonna, I'm going to speak on those three points this morning. I want to just share with you some of the things that God's laid on my heart today. And the first thing I want to look at is the place where the silver was lost. You know, verse 8 says, Or oh, what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? You know, what we see in this verse, friends, is the woman lost a piece of silver in her own house, the place where she lived. You know, how often do we lose things? I know I often lose things. And you know, where did I put it? What did I do with it? And you go walking back thinking, I've just been there, I'll go and have a look over here, and it's not there. I'll go upstairs, and you, you don't go upstairs too many times, because, well, it's good, it actually gets your steps up on your phone or on your watch or whatever you got, but you get out of breath. But you do, you don't you? You go retracing your steps, trying to find things. And this parable tells us of a woman who lost one piece of silver out of ten in the house that she lived in. You know, she had nine other pieces, but this one was lost. So the place where the silver was lost was in her own house. So what does that teach us, friends, this morning? What does that show us this morning, friends? You know, this verse teaches us that we can be here in the house, in God's house, and we can still be lost. You know, in, the, in God's house. You know, the woman had ten pieces of silver, and all those pieces of silver were, the, were in her house. But there was still one of those pieces that was lost. You know, here today there might be I don't know, 60, 70 people in the church, you might be the one that is lost. You can be in God's house and you can still be lost. You know, let us be sure this morning, friends, that just because we're in God's house, it doesn't mean that we're not lost. You know, the coin was in that woman's house and it was still lost. You know, what does it mean when it says it was lost? The lost coin is like one of us being lost, not knowing Jesus as our Lord and our Saviour, not knowing Jesus as our, the King of our life. That lost coin is like one of us heading to a Christless eternity. You know, we can be here today, we can be watching online, friends. It doesn't matter how we're joining this meeting this morning, and we can be going through all the motions of coming into church, you know, shaking people's hands, getting your tea, getting your coffee, getting your bread and wine as you come in, and people thinking, oh, they're a great Christian. And on the surface... People think that we're a Christian, but deep down, only you will know if you are or if you're lost. You know, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 says, but if the gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are lost. And you know, as children of God this morning, we have a responsibility, friends, to preach the gospel, to live the gospel, so people can see the good news of Jesus in us. You know, whatever way we share that gospel, the important thing is, is that we share it to, to those who are lost. 
It might be for some of us, we stand at the front like this and speak the gospel. It might be that we teach it or live it out in our lives, in our homes, which we should do anyway, friends. It might be that we bump into someone in the street and we just start talking to them. It might be that we talk to someone at Ope Haven Cafe on a Thursday. You know, just sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus. You know, we all have that responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus with those who are lost. You know, the lost might be here today, as I said, in God's house. The lost might be in your home. You know, the lost might be in your house. The lost might be the person that you're working with in your workplace. The lost might be the person who lives next door. The lost might be your husband, might be your wife, might be your son, might be your daughter, might be your grandchildren, might be your grandparents. You know, I'm sure we've all got family who are lost friends. Whoever the lost are, we need to ensure that we just live the gospel out in front of them, friends, so they can see Jesus living in us. And you know, friends, let us never take it for granted that someone is saved. You know, I was brought up in a Christian home, and you know, it was great. I went to church three times a day. Sometimes I don't think it was great at that time, but looking back, it was great. And I think, why am I going? Why am I going? But morning and afternoon and night time. And you know, I've got to say, that was the best upbringing that I could have ever had. You know, the best upbringing, being brought up in a Christian home, what a privilege I had, friends. And you know, looking back, I could have never had a better upbringing. But even though I had a great start, it still didn't save me. You know, I still was lost. You know, I was still lost, just like that piece of silver. I was in the house of God every week, three times on a Sunday. I mixed with Christians, and yet I was still lost. And you know, it wasn't until the 31st of October in 1981 that I gave my life to the Lord. And that's when I became a child of God. And then I was found again. Like them other nine coins, I was no longer lost, but I was found. And you know, let me encourage you this morning, friends, all of you are children of God, just to keep praying for your family. Keep praying for your friends. Keep praying for your neighbours. Keep praying for those who you come into contact with, that they will give their lives to the Lord. So the first point is the place where the silver was lost. The second one is the preciousness of the silver. You know, in the days of Jesus, a woman would be given a piece of silver as a wedding gift. That was the custom and the tradition. You know, people would save for that special occasion. They would buy a silver coin or a small piece of silver and they would pass it to the bride when she got married. You know, the silver was valued as much as a wedding ring. And obviously silver is still very valuable today, isn't it, friends? You you see it. You know, sometimes when I'm having my lunch break, if I'm working from home, Lorraine will be watching Bargain Hunt, you know. It's on at 12.15 at lunchtime. And sometimes I watch it, you get a blue team and they wear blue fleeces. You get a red team and they wear a red fleece. And they get a so-called expert. And I call them so-called experts because sometimes I think they're a bit rubbish at picking the right stuff. (laughs) They'll spend a fortune on stuff, and I think it's worth nothing, and sometimes it is like, but then sometimes I am wrong. But you know, sometimes they'll come across that little bit of silver, and you know, silver still has value. And you know, sometimes it might be a little stamp case, or it might be a toast rack, but you know, if they come across a silver little dog, well, they sell like a Ford, they just go, because people love silver dogs. People love collecting animals. And you know, if they buy it for the right price, then they'll sell it for a good profit. And you know, silver has still got a lot of value. And that's why people still want it. And when Jesus told this parable, silver was also valuable in those days. But you know, another thing we need to understand is that because silver was given to a woman as a wedding gift, it had great sentimental value as well. It would have been given out of love and it would have cost something to that person who was giving it to them. You know, they would probably have had to save and save up for a long time to buy that silver. You know, for someone to lose a piece of this precious silver, it would be upsetting, and it wouldn't be easily dismissed, you know, friends. You know, it would cause that woman upset. It would play on her mind until she found it. You know, she would be constantly thinking about it. Where's that silver gone? What did I do with it? Because it would mean so much to her, and it was so valued by her. You know, she once had it, and then it was lost that precious piece of silver which was given to her out of love and maybe out of sacrifice, that piece of silver was lost. 
So back to that second point, the preciousness of the silver. You know the silver was precious, but you know, friends, your life is more precious in the sight of God. You know the silver was costly, but your life is more costly. The silver was valued, but you know, friends, your life is more valued this morning. The silver cost someone a high price, but you know, friends, your life has cost Jesus his life when he went to the cross of Calvary. You know, the silver that costs so much has cost God so much by giving his only son for us. You know, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour this morning, then you are that lost piece of silver. And God is wanting you to find him. God is wanting you to give your life back to him. You are valued, friends. You are precious. You are loved by God. You know, God never thinks that you are worthless. You know, the world might sometimes think that you're worthless. The world will think that that one person, it doesn't matter. There's another nine other people who are saved. It doesn't matter. There's one. That's how the world thinks, friends. But God sees you as all as precious. God sees us all as valued. God sees us all as someone who needs salvation. All of us, friends, need to be found. You know, God sees you, sees us as that piece of silver that, that was lost. And today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour, then you are that piece of silver which is lost. But you are precious to the Lord. You know, you are valued by, by God. And you are loved by God this morning. This morning, friends, if you ever feel down, if you ever feel unloved, if you ever feel worthless, then remember this passage about that lost piece of silver. Jesus told this parable because he wanted to point out that you are someone, you are loved, you are valued, and you are precious to him. And also, friends, you know, if you're a child of God this morning, then you also remain precious to God. You know, your value doesn't go down. It's not like buying a car and the value drops. When you become a child of God, your value is still there. The Lord will always look after you. He will, you know, you don't give your life to Christ and then struggle on your own. God is there. He is faithful to you day by day. You know, I remember the words of that great song, No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. And you know, I, I really believe that, friends, that no one can take me out of the hand of God. Nothing and no one except for myself can take me out of the hand of God. You know, I was talking to some, some good friends this week and we were discussing some things, lots of things about life and about things that are happening to us. And we were discussing how God has never let us down, friends. You know, he's never failed us. You know, he's never disappeared when times have got tough. You know, sometimes, friends, we don't know how things will pan out in our lives. And we don't know the future. But we can rest assured this morning that we are precious to the Lord. And he will never desert us, friends. You know, let me encourage everyone here today to remember this. That whatever it is that you are going through, however difficult times might seem, then never forget that you are precious in the sight of the Lord. You might be thinking, well, how can David understand? He don't know what I'm going through. He don't know. He comes to church each week and he smiles. He stands at the front. He encourages us to praise the Lord. And how does he know what I'm going through? But you know, friends, when you look at a church this size, and for every face, I guess there's every difficulty as well. There's as many difficulties and problems that we're going through, friends. And you know, we can just trust in God to help us through those struggles, through, those, through, through all those difficulties. You know, right throughout the years, God has helped his children. And I could go around this church this morning, and for those who have been saved, you will give us examples of how God has been faithful to you over the years. How God has just met your needs time and time again. And you know, that is because we are so precious to him. So the first point, friends, the place where the silver was lost. The second point is the preciousness of the silver. And then the third point is the powerlessness of the silver. You know, the final thing that I notice is the silver on its own didn't have much power. You know, it was a small piece, and in itself it could do very little. You know, what could that small piece of silver do, friends? 
You know, friends, on our own, we will struggle and we will sometimes fail. And as many of you know, I've often said in the past that I work for a large motor company, as many of you know I do. In fact, it's the uh, largest motor company in the world. I won't mention its name because, uh, because uh, it's a little bit biased. But uh, if you want to buy a decent car, just look what I drive away in this morning. And, uh, and uh, that's my sales pitch for today done. And uh, hopefully that will uh, secure me a good pay rise this year. But uh, we'll go for that. But I've worked for this large company, this company, for 25 years. And on the second day, we started to learn about teamwork, friends. About you can't do things on your own. That was the first day was boring. It was filling paperwork in. But I still remember the second day, we were learning about team building right from the start. And you know, in that factory in Derby, there's around 1,000 people who build a car every 90 seconds and a production line and a car comes off fully built in 90 seconds it takes a thousand people one person on their own would struggle they wouldn't have the power to do it friends you know they need the team of people to make that quality product and that's what we need friends we need to work within a team together you know that piece of silver on its own was powerless but when it was put with other silver it had more power friends and friends it's exactly the same with us we can only do a little on our own. We can try with all the might that we've got, everything we want to do to serve the Lord. But you know, on his own, we will fail in our own strength. And then we'll get worn down and we'll get tired. For firstly, friends, we need to understand we can't do things alone. First, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do, friends. You know, we can't do anything without the power of the Holy Spirit. We're powerless on our own. But you know, with the Spirit, friends, we become a powerful people. We become powerful in God. Also, not only do we need the Spirit, but we also need each other's and each other to be filled with the Spirit. You know, what a force, a group of people filled with the Holy Spirit working for the Lord. You know, we can do great things in God when we pull together, when we work with, with each other and work with the Holy Spirit. You know, when we're part of the family of God, joined by the Holy Spirit, then we become a powerful people, a people who can help others, a people who can serve others, you know, friends, a people who can have a positive impact on other people's lives. We've become someone who God can use for his glory. So as I close this morning, friends, let us remember about this old story, the story of that small piece of silver. You know it was lost in the house. You know, you can be sat in church for years and still be lost. Don't be deceived into thinking that coming to church will save you. Coming to church can be a place where you can be saved, but it is only Jesus who saves friends. You know, the silver was precious. Never forget that you are precious in the sight of the Lord. Others around you might want to knock you down. They might try telling you that you're worthless. But you know, this morning you can stand up and know the Lord, in the Lord, you are valued. You are precious in the Lord, and he will never let you be destroyed. And thirdly, the silver was powerless. You know, on its own, friends, the silver could do very little. It had very little power to make a difference. And you know, on our own, we can do very little. We have very little power. We are limited to make a difference. However, working together with God's people, with the family of God, being joined by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the power, friends, to change things. We have the strength to hold each other up, and we have the abil ability to meet each other's needs. Can we just pray for a moment, friends? Lord, we do thank you for this word this morning. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, as I spoke this word, Lord, that you would just let, let it grow in our hearts, Lord, that you will speak to us, Lord. And Lord, this morning, I pray for if there's anyone in this church who, do, who don't know you or watch it online, Lord, that they won't leave this morning without giving their heart and life to you, Lord. Lord, let none of us be lost. Let none of us be like that lost coin, Lord. But let us all know this morning that we are valued in you. We are precious, Lord. We are worth something, Lord. And Lord Jesus, that you gave your life, you made that sacrifice that we might have everlasting life. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'll bless this word to our hearts. Amen. Thank you.